Um, just want to welcome everyone that's here and that's online this morning to our our worship time together. Um, you know, it's been it's been a struggle thinking about coming back here for the first time to meet with everyone to to know what to say and and to uh, well. You know, we've, we've missed everybody. We've missed this. Uh, I got up this morning, you know, and I was hoping that, that Lane and I would be making homemade ice cream this morning for, for our Focus Sunday. But, you know, even though I miss that, I don't miss that near as much as I miss this. And I look forward, again, to, uh, to us being able to do this uh, with our whole family here soon. So, uh, again, welcome. Uh, it's going to be a great morning. And as we uh, begin this morning, let's pray together. Our God and Father, we, we thank you, Father, for this time that we can be together as a family. We pray, Father, that all that we do and say here this morning will be pleasing to you and uplifting to each one of us. Um, we thank you, Father, that that you take care of us and you watch out for us and provide all that we need. We pray, Father, that uh, as we've gone through this, this time of difference uh, the last few months, um, that, that we will be able to, to see, Father, how, how you do provide and care for us. Uh, we pray that we will look at our... Um, We pray that we will that we will look at the us being apart um, as a way of reminding us how important it is for us to be together. We look forward to being together, not just with our family here, Father, but we look forward to being with you one day. We thank you for being here with us. We thank you. Uh, that you have provided this this opportunity for us to be a family and and to grow together and to be uh, close to each other and close to you. Um, we pray, Father, that as we sing these songs of praise to you, that we will pay attention to the words, uh, that we will take them into our hearts, and that uh, as we uh, do proclaim them back to you, Father, that we will do so in a way that pleases you and that uplifts each one here. We pray, Father, especially for those of our number that are struggling with health difficulties and loss, um, uh, loss of family members. Uh, we pray that, that they will find comfort in you and that we will be able to assist in that in, in any way that we can. But Father, again, uh, we just thank you for the time that we have together today, and we look forward to many, many more times like this soon. Uh, we ask these things in your Son's name. Amen. Good morning. First song this morning will be, if you have a songbook, number 63. I will call upon the Lord. <clears throat> and if you don't mind, I'd like for us to stand for this song, please. <clears throat> I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord never and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I from my enemies. The Lord never and bless me the rock and let the God of my 
salvation be exalted in the Lord Amen. and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted I will call upon the Lord Amen please be seated Number 539, pressing on to higher ground. <clears throat> 539. The IT guys are hard at work. Sure, it's fine. All right. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on high and stable land. Higher plain than I have found, Lord, plant my feet on high. Where doubts arise and fears dismay, though some may dwell where these are bound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven, stable land, higher plain than I have found. scale the utmost high and catch a gleam of glory bright. Little heaven I found, Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. Plant my feet on higher ground. <clears throat> Number 768. 768. And after this song, I'll turn it over to Lane. <clears throat> Jesus, let us come to know you. Let us see you face to face. Touch us, hold us, use us, mold us. Only let us live in you. Jesus, draw so good to be together. I do wish that uh, we were able to meet together as an entire congregation, but this will do for now. So we will all be back together uh, soon enough, so I sure look forward to that. Uh, special greetings to those of y'all that are at home and, uh, and watching this today. Uh, would love for y'all to be with us, but I know that y'all are kind of with us in, uh, in spirit here, so uh, that's good, and uh, hope that you are encouraged from our service this morning. As Logan and I were talking this past week, we wanted to do a, a, a lesson that would just be a, a good shot in the arm for everybody. It's, it's kind of been a long six weeks. It has been a, a struggle, I think, for each one of us uh, to get through this. 
and uh, we weren't real sure where we wanted to go. I visited with the elder some, and Mickey Davis said, why don't y'all do something from the book of Philippians? And I think that was already on Logan and I's mind, so uh, we jumped right in there, and we hadn't read the first few verses, and we go, we just got to preach from Philippians chapter 1. So if you have your Bibles, open up to Philippians chapter 1. We're going to look at this in two sections this, excuse me, this morning. And let me just remind us that Paul was in prison when he wrote this particular letter. And he was in a, a type of a, of a quarantine, wasn't he? He was quarantined from all his brothers and sisters in Christ. And there were a lot of things that were going on in Paul's mind at this time. Now, obviously, our situation cannot be compared with his. You know, we've been quarantined at home. It has been comfortable. We've had TV and couches and all those kinds of things. We've been able to get outside. Paul, of course, was in prison in a cold, dark place. But you know what? If Surely, if he can be joyful, and surely, if he can think great things about the church in those circumstances, surely we can. And I, I am confident, indeed, we have. So what I'd like to share with you this morning, at least in the first few verses, are some of the things that Paul thought about during this particular time of quarantine. And I'd like for us to kind of reflect on the past uh, six weeks or so and some of the things that we have thought about as well, and then we'll make one uh, kind of application uh, at the end here of section one. So if you would, look at verse three. Here's kind of Paul's first thought. He says, I thank my God in all of my remembrance of you. You know, and that's a, a great blessing for us as Christians that we have a history with one another. Uh, Paul no doubt had a lot of fond memories from the church in Philippi. Times when he had eaten with the church, times when he had been out in the, probably in the city center with the church, preaching the gospel with them, uh, perhaps been at several baptisms that took place during that time. Now, we too have that kind of history with each other. We have, have eaten and had meals together. We look forward to getting to do that again. We have laughed together. We have cried together. We have sang and prayed and worshiped together. We've traveled together. We have come and merged together. We have a great history together. We've watched our kids grow up, a lot of us, in, in each other's family. We watched them grow up. We have met each other's kinfolks. We have been to weddings. We have been to funerals. Uh, we have been to visit people in the hospitals. We have a lot of history together. And brothers and sisters, I would suggest to you that this is a great gift from God. It is, it is a gift that not everybody in our world has. Now, everybody will have some kind of memory, obviously, of people and events, but I would suggest to you nothing like we as God's people have. Because we have all been joined together by the blood of Jesus Christ, making us closer than family. And as we think about our history together, what a great, what a great memory that is. What a great gift from God that He has given to us. I thank God upon all of my remembrance of you. The second thing Paul will say, if you look at verses 4 and 5, he says, always offering prayers with joy for every, uh, in every prayer for you all, in view of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now. So the second thing Paul was thinking about during his quarantine was the fact that the church had a partnership in the gospel. Now, first of all, that means that they had been covered by the blood of Christ when they were baptized, just as Paul had been, so he could remember that and be joyful for that in their lives. But there's more to this partnership than just that. There, again, is a history, but it is a history of, of working in the kingdom. There is a history of, of them being brothers. You know, uh, when I get out and I'm visiting with people and I run across a fellow bow hunter or I run across a fellow striper fisherman or a fellow duck hunter, you know, we automatically feel a camaraderie there. We automatically feel like there's some things that we can talk about. And that's good. But you know what? When I'm out and about, if I'm on an airplane, for example, i got somebody sitting next to me and I find out they're a member of the Lord's church, they go from a total stranger to a brother that I can put my arm around and just give a big hug. It, you know that, that, that thought process, it is something totally different. And Paul says that he is thankful for the partnership that the church in Philippi has with him. 
It is a bond of camaraderie, a bond of unity like nothing else on the planet. And again, I would suggest to you the world does not have that. Uh, the world may enjoy having fellow bow hunters and fellow striper fishermen together, but it's nothing like the, like the bond that we have as God's people. Paul thought about that while he was in prison. The third thing Paul thought about was the confidence that he had in God. If you look at, uh, look at verse 6, he says, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, Paul was absolutely convinced that God would continue to work in the lives of the church at Philippi. And brothers and sisters, the same is true for us. Yes, we have a job to do with each other. We all Christians, we all have a, a, a duty to serve one another and to serve mankind. But you know what? If we are in prison or if we are quarantined somewhere, God's going to continue to take care of His church. And I believe that Paul thought, you know what? If God doesn't use me to help grow the church of Philippi, God will find somebody. God is not going to abandon anyone anywhere. God will take care of his church. And again, what an encouraging thought. What an encouraging thought that we don't have to, quote, worry about each other if we're separated because God is taking care of his family. God is taking care of his church. And it may not be the way we were taking care of things six months ago, but God will continue to take care of his church. And haven't you noticed that in the last six weeks or so? Haven't you noticed people stepping up to the plate and just doing all kinds of things to encourage? All the notes that were sent and the telephone calls and the singing out on the front porches and the signs that were put in people's yards. And no doubt, that's just the things I know of. No doubt there were many other things as well. God will take care of his people and Paul took great confidence in that. Number four, found in verse seven, Paul says, it is only right for me to feel this way about you all because I have you in my heart, since both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of grace with me. And I titled this thought, The Depth of Their Commitment. Paul thought about how deeply committed the church at Philippi was to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want for you to notice what he says here. He says, first of all, there in verse 7, that they were with him in his imprisonment. So when Paul was being hauled off to prison, and perhaps in prison, the church of Philippi found, out, found a way to minister to him. Perhaps risking their own lives, went to the prison and visited. Perhaps were with him when he was handcuffed and dragged off. He will then say a little bit later, he said, in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. Well, what is that? What is the defense of the gospel? Taking a stand. <laughs> when the, the folks in Philippi that were not believers came against Paul, guess what? The church Philippi stood right there beside him. And they made their defense against the gospel as well. And not only was it a defense of the gospel, it was a confirmation of the gospel. We are indeed children of God, and the persecution that comes our way is confirmation of that. And Paul says, I am so thankful. It is right for me to feel this way about you because you are partakers of grace with me. And it was the grace that was brought about because of the persecution and the suffering that the church experienced. What a great memory for Paul while he was in his quarantine, in his isolation. He could remember the great stand that the church took on behalf, on behalf of the gospel. And then finally, verse number 8. Paul says, For God is my witness how I long for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. While Paul was in his quarantine, he looked forward to being back together. And again, haven't we all experienced the same thing over the past few weeks? I, I have so looked forward to today, I, and I, I told Logan this morning, I've been a little kind of anxiously nervous, you know, about getting back together. I actually had a hard time sleeping last night, thinking about getting back together today. Uh, the, the singing, although we're only, what, a quarter of what we normally are in here today, uh, the singing was awesome. <laughs> and the singing again moved me. And, and you know, it, it, singing always moves me. Y'all know how much I love singing. But I have missed 
y'all's voices together. Even sit next to Michael there, you know. I've, I've missed this. I have missed our voices joining together as God's people. There is nothing, nothing that the world has that can touch this. There's nothing the world has that could that they can long for with the affection of Christ Jesus like we can as the body of Jesus Christ. Well, brothers and sisters, what a great message from the Apostle Paul. What great words of encouragement about Paul's quarantine that we can kind of relate to uh, in, in some way at least from the past few weeks. God has given us a wonderful gift in each other. And let me continue su to suggest to you that we make the most of this amazing gift. Let's learn, let's learn the lessons from being secluded and, and separated from one another. And let's think about that longing. Let's remember the great times that we've had together. And let's make it a point and make a commitment that we will continue to make more and more good memories. So we will continue to be more and more uh, together in defense of the gospel of Jesus Christ that we will enjoy our participation in the gospel together because there may be a time in our future when this something similar or perhaps even something worse happens again. Maybe God has given us a little bit of instruction here to get us ready for something later. Uh, bring it on. <laughs> We've made it. I, I, I don't want it to come, but you know what? If that's what the Lord needs to do to grow me up, then, then, then let it happen. And we will be ready. Brothers and sisters, I want to close with Philippians chapter 2 and verses 1 and 2. If there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit and intent on one purpose. Would you join me in a word of prayer as we close this section? Father, you are a great and powerful and awesome God, and we are so thankful for these words of encouragement from your servant Paul. Father, help us to take these words to heart, and Father, help us to live these out in our lives. Help us to have these fond memories that will challenge us and encourage us and give us courage and strength for the coming days. Father, help us be ready for whatever Satan may bring our way, whatever this culture may bring our way. Father, help us be ready to take a stand for you, stand shoulder to shoulder with our brothers and sisters in Christ, and be the kind of people that you need us to be in this world. God, we love you. It's through your son we pray. Amen. James. Number 221. 221. In Jesus, name above all names. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Seventy-nine, four, seven, nine. Peace, perfect peace. Sing the first three verses and then uh, turn it over to. Oh, look, yeah. <laughs> peace, perfect peace in this dark world of sin. The blood of Jesus whispers. Peace.
peace within. Peace, perfect peace, by thronging duties press to do. good to see so many of you here this morning. The book of Philippians, such a beautifully handcrafted letter from Paul to a church that he loves dearly. And before we open these verses, I personally want to say I can't describe with words the blessing it is to be here, to share with you all, to share the Lord's Supper together. Uh, there's some limitations on how we love right now. And handshake or a hug, but you know, we're, we're not defined by just that. There's so much more to our relationship than that, isn't there? We have a like precious faith, and a, please don't forget that. There's lots of ways to love, and you've proved that, as Lane has already talked about, in the serving hearts that you have. So you, you've loved in so many different ways. Did you know your knowledge, though, has a lot to do with love? In Philippians 1, 9 through 11, I'm going to read there, you read, you follow along there, Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes through Jesus Christ, the glory and praise of God. You notice there he doesn't ask them to abound in their love based on their wealth or based on their high attendance numbers. Notice what he asks them to abound in love and what he prays for them to abound in love in. You see, some are, are, are more affectionate sometimes, but uh, less knowing. Some are a lot of knowing but not too affectionate. Some people today, they want us to emphasize love, and that's it. And doctrine, not so much. But Paul is praying for them here. The emphasis must be on both. And not only just both, but a growing knowledge and discernment. Paul is praying for them to abound in the love and here and abound in more in real knowledge and discernment. Pure love is rooted in knowledge and discernment. 1 Corinthians 15, or 13, it talks about how love rejoices with the truth. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, John 15. And so you see love, there, there should be an emphasis on both. And you look at where Paul is, as Lane talked about, he's in prison and he's talking to the church. Do you know who he's writing to? Do you know who is opening this letter and reading it? It's the family of the jailer, the Philippian jailer. It's Lydia and her family. It's the demon-possessed girl in, in Acts 16 and, and, and that family there. That, you go back to Acts 16 and you see who's reading this letter. He spent time in their homes. He knows them by person to person. He, they helped him wash his wounds in Acts 16. They, he spent time in the jailer's house. He spent time in Lydia's house at the end of Acts 16. Think about how he knows them. He, he knows them. He's writing to a people that he knows. And first he says this. I pray that your love abounds in knowledge and discernment. You know, I like meat. I, a hot dog is not really meat to me. I like fresh cooked meat. And Corinth was told, you remember Paul told the church in Corinth, you're not ready for that. You are, you are solely satisfied on surviving on milk. And he says, it's time to go to meat. 
Well, you see, you can love, but your love should abound in knowledge and discernment. <clears throat> Some of you didn't just meet together the last several weeks. You grew in wisdom. You grew in so many different ways. You, you found out what it's like to be a church like the early church at your homes. You learn through that. You can say, we, we learn some of that. And, and this knowledge that he's talking about, or this epignosis, is a knowledge of the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. To grow in that. Brethren, we can't love without God's Word. You can't. Without the Word of God, how would we understand anything? How would we understand ultimate, sacrificial, deep love? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. You can't love without knowledge of the Bible, of the God's Word. And so this is a biblical love that's abounding. And discernment, that's dif differentiating between what is good and evil. Imagine if you didn't have that. Imagine if we worshiped together just based on love and not knowledge and discernment. We wouldn't know what to do. So, why do we need to abound more in knowledge and discernment? Secondly, he says this, you'll understand what is vital so that you may approve of these things. Like I said, imagine not being able to approve or disprove. You, you couldn't know what's right or wrong. You wouldn't be able to say, okay, I'm, I'm comfortable knowing this is right now and what pleases God. I'm, I, I wouldn't know how to pray deeper. You can't teach what you don't know. So get your wits about us, brethren. Redefine in your minds what is good and what is evil. That's vital. Another, another answer to the question why. So you may be sincere. And that means you, you, have a, a, you won't have a corruption of the world inside your heart. It, it means you won't, you'll be like a pure glass of, of water or a sweet-smelling aroma. You won't be warring on the inside of right and wrong so much. You'll be at peace, the most peace that we can understand. Peace, perfect peace. We just sang the song. You won't war anymore. You'll be sincere in your hearts. And you'll, you'll have that peace of knowing that. But secondly, as, as to answer why, because Jesus is coming again. That's why. Is there any greater force and reminder for a prayer for the church than that point right there? Because Jesus is coming again. And we're going to stand before Him held accountable. Do you see what kind of prayer this is? How would this kind of a prayer uh, affect the leadership in the congregation if we prayed this more often? That we abound in more knowledge and discernment? How, you know, would there be much leadership as far as, if we prayed this more, would there be much lacking in, in stability or zealousness in our leadership? And where you are, did you see the urgency here? And so you imagine this church gathering around with Lydia and her family and the jailer and his family and they're listening to this letter and they might look at one another and they say, you know, Paul's right. We've got to abound more in this. We've got to grow. Let's put that into action. And some of you might be carrying right now the weight of a spiritually imbalanced life. That's a, that's a hard burden to bear. Maybe it's time to abound more in your love and in your dis uh, knowledge and discernment. You know what? what one of the most, I want to close with this statement. One of the most triumphant tears I have ever seen shed are the tears shed for the desire to know God's Word more fully. Are you there yet? Do you have a vision to be there, a goal to be there? Maybe you have a need this morning. Maybe the church needs to pray for you, as Paul is saying here. Maybe the church could gather together, and maybe if you need to obey the gospel, I don't care about a virus, we'll help you obey the gospel. Maybe you need to do that this morning. Maybe you need to ask for prayers. You can come right now as we stand and sing, James.
Number 837, I Need the Every Hour. I need the every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to As we begin to prepare our minds for the taking of the Lord's Supper together, <clears throat> we'll sing number 354 and then uh, 315 after that. 354. <clears throat> I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom be. And quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? My father's house of life, my glory circle throne. I left for earthly night, for wandering sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee, what I left all for me. I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left all for me. I suffered much for thee, more than thy tongue can tell. A bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell. I've grown, I've borne it all for thee. What hast thou borne for me? I've borne, I've borne it all for thee. What hast thou borne for me? Please be seated. 315. <coughs> Sing the first three verses. When I survey the wondrous cross, the Prince of Glory died. My richest King, I count but loss, and poor contempt on Thou 
that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my Lord. All the vain things that shun me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow. such love and sorrow meet, for thorns compose so rich a crown. In just a moment, we are going to take the Lord's Supper together and before we do that, hopefully uh, you've got one of these uh, cups and it's got the, the bread and the fruit of the vine in it. If you don't, Donnie has some more back there if you didn't grab one on the way in. Before we get into the Devo, I want to just make sure everybody knows how to use them. There's two layers to this. The top part, there's a tab on the side. The top part, there is a, a clearish uh, seal that you'll pull back in a moment when it's time and you'll be able to get the bread out individually. And then when we get to the, the juice, there's a second seal that you'll pull after that. So if, if you have any trouble with it, let us know and we'll get it figured out. Just one of the many things um, that's a little different for us, right? Uh, we're not used to these, uh, to, looks like to-go <laughs> communion trays. Um, but we, we've been handling a lot of things that aren't normal for us, right? This whole, what are we in, a month and a half, close to two months, I'm not sure. We, things have been very, very different for us. I would say in my life, for sure, probably Sundays have been the thing that feel most abnormal, most turned upside down. You know, for many people, maybe Sundays are the days that feel the most normal. Sundays for a lot of people is a good day to sleep in and, and not see anybody and, and watch a little TV. But not for us. Sundays were the days when, when we would get together and as one body remember what Christ has done for us. And you know, I think maybe with all the things that have been different, I think it may have focused us in on the one thing that's truly important, right? Many of us were worshiping in, in, in different places and in, in a little bit different ways over these last Sundays. I know most of us were, were watching the sermons online and uh, some of us made our own communion bread and had our own juice and some of us had to come up to the building to get it and have it prepared. There were different times that we were, were partaking of the Lord's Supper. Some would do it early in the morning. The elders would get up here and I think the first time they did it uh, at 7 they gave a live stream. Many of us waited until later to watch that. But some people were up at, at 6 or 7, and may, maybe there were people even partaking in the Lord's Supper before the, the sun was even out. And then there was probably some of our college kids that it was a lot closer to the sun going down before they, they partook of the Lord's Supper. So that was different. What we were wearing was different. <laughs> uh, we did some Zoom stuff online, and, uh, and i got to admit, most of us, we're, we're not really that dressed up for it. But we were still worshiping. And you know, even now, look at all of our haircuts. <laughs> we're probably not looking our Sunday best, are we? But you know, none of that was important. And maybe that's something that we, we've drawn out of this, is that we have learned what is truly important. It isn't the spot that we're sitting at. It isn't even the building that we're meeting in. And maybe it's not even the fact that we can all be together 
What's really important is that we have a Savior who gave His life for us, who was willing to take on the, the, the sin, the debt that our sin created, and give Himself on the cross. And I think that's why, I'm, I'm going to be in 1 Corinthians in a second, but I think that's why Paul, when he's writing this letter to them, reminds them, the church at Corinth, I didn't come to you with lofty speech or wisdom. He said, I came and I preached one thing to you. Christ and Him crucified. And you know, if anything, I think this past month or so, we've probably realized that that is the message that is most important. There's no eloquent words that I can get up here and give that, that are more important than that. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for, for everyone who has ever lived so that they might have a hope of heaven. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You know, maybe many people in the world saw us on Facebook saying, well, I wish we could be with our family. I wish we could worship together. And they're going, enjoy the time off. It's, <laughs> you, that seems foolish. Why would you, why would you want to have to go to church? And it, it's, it's foolishness to them. But those of us who understand what Jesus has done for us, how Jesus has paid the price to ransom us from enslavement of sin, there is power in the cross. Over in Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, Paul talks a little bit more about this power in the cross. In verse 19 he says, For in Him, that being Jesus, for in Him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of His cross. You know, it was only through Jesus' death on the cross and through His shed blood that we could be reconciled to God. That word reconciled means to take an enemy and make him a friend. It can't happen without Jesus' death on the cross, without Jesus' resurrection. We were standing as enemies of God. Our Creator created us for a purpose, and we said, you know what, I've got my own plans. I've got my own purposes. And yet, our God loves us enough that through the cross, through the blood of Jesus, we can go from being His enemy to being someone who has turned away from Him, who has, has shown Him that we care nothing about Him, to becoming His friend. We can be reconciled. And that is the power of the cross that Paul talks about. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, In Him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with Him in baptism, in which you were also raised with Him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised Him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses, the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with Him, having forgiven us all our trespasses, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He says that, that we have a circumcision not made with hands. What he means there, circumcision in the old, in the old law was the covenant or promises, uh, a reminder of the promise that God had given to his people. And Jesus, uh, when he was taken, uh, when he was instituting the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper as we know it, he says, that juice, this is the covenant of my blood. This blood is, is of the new covenant. That means there are new and better promises through Jesus. And we are reminded of that. He goes on to say that we have forgiveness through the cross. 
The cross is so powerful, and as we focus our attention on, it, attention on it this morning, I hope that we remember that. I want us to look at one more section of verses. It's in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 through 16. We see that the cross reconciles us to God. We see that the cross gives us forgiveness of sins, and, and, and that we can know that we have promises through the cross, that we can be with God forever, but there's one more thing that the cross does. In verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For He Himself is our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down in His flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments, expressed in ordinances that He might create in Himself one new man in place of the two so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. Paul was talking there to the, the Gentiles and the Jews, a people who didn't have a lot in common before the cross, really didn't even like each other very much, wouldn't talk to each other. If they saw each other in Walmart, would probably skip that aisle. And yet, he said through the cross, the hostility is not there anymore. The walls have been broken down. He says God has replaced the two men with one. And I think that's the power of the cross as well. As we were separated and not able to be in the building together, we missed each other. We wanted to be together not as a, a social club, not just because uh, these are our friends, but because we are united through our common belief in the power of the cross. We are united in what Jesus has done for us. We understand the power of the cross. I think as we continue on, I think the church is going to be stronger than ever. I really believe that. Seeing the things that people, uh, you guys have been saying on Facebook, the, the text messages I've received, the phone calls I've received, just the, the times I've got to talk to individuals, the church is going to be stronger than ever. Because we have a refocused attention on the cross and what's most important to us. If you will, let's pray together and partake of the Lord's Supper as we remember what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Heavenly Father, as we partake of this bread, we are reminded of the body that was given in our place, the willingness that Jesus showed to take on our debt. He allowed people to mock Him. He allowed people to beat Him. He allowed Himself to be nailed to a cross hang their suffering. And God, we know the reason why. He loved us and wanted to offer us a hope of salvation. Father, as we partake of this bread, we pray that you will bless it and bless all of us who partake of it, that we might truly remember what is most important and who we are living for. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you'll take the bread, we'll have a moment of reflection before a prayer for the cup.
continue in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, we remember the blood that was shed for us and the blood which cleanses us, the blood which gives us hope. Father, we easily can take this for granted. The blood that was poured out, God, I pray that at this time we are reminded of, of the, the love that was shown to us, the sacrifice that was given, the mercy that was displayed. Lord, we are thankful for the cross. We come with mixed emotions. We are saddened because it had to happen, but we are ecstatic because of what it brings. Father, again, we pray that you will bless this cup and bless all of us who partake of it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Last song will be number 68, Give Thanks. <clears throat> we'll have announcements and uh, closing prayer after this. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. couple of announcements before we close our services this morning. Martin was here earlier. I don't see. Were we going to have a, a report this morning? Yes, sir. Why don't we do that first? It's going to be a good report. <laughs> uh, quickly, I'll tell you that, that uh, while we haven't been meeting here, the construction has not. Uh, slowed down or stopped. It has, in fact, it has ramped up significantly. If you haven't been to the building site, the slab is complete. It looks wonderful. The uh, red iron or structural steel has all been delivered. It's laid by, I believe, this week. The teams will show up to stand up. That you'll see the you'll see the bones. You'll see the skeleton of our uh, new building come up this week and probably in the following week. So. Uh, Jay, uh, he's not here to tell me no, and Dale, he's not here to tell me no. I've done a great job of pushing the contractors and the teams out there to get this work done. I can't tell you of the things that they've gathered up that have been donated, that we have not had to pay for, that those services have been provided uh, for the congregation. It's, it's truly been inspiring to watch. To give you a, an update on the funds, and then I'll let you go at this, 
We still have in the bank $981,000. We've spent so far about $491,000 towards the, the project. And again, that doesn't include many, many things that I can't describe that have been, that have been given freely to the, to the church. So we are well on the way of having phase one completed. Uh, we have everything that we need to get that done. And again, uh, the teams are pushing very hard. So continue to pray for the elders as they continue to make this happen and, and make decisions. They're setting forms. Uh, Jimmy points out that the parking lot, all the parking lot will be, will be done very, very soon. They're, they're setting the forms up now to pour that concrete. We're not going to wait for the building to be complete and then, and then build a, 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 the spaces to park. That's being done now. So that will be done very, very soon. That's going to be something to see. Thank you all. If you've not been out there, it's exciting to see. Uh, that's just, there's no other way to, to describe it. We welcome you here this morning. For those who are sitting here, and for those of you who are, are watching this morning uh, online, uh, it actually felt normal to get up and get ready to come to church this morning. Uh, it's been a weird feeling these past few weeks getting up on Sunday morning and not going to worship services with all of you. It, it just, uh, it feels right, it feels good, and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. It's great to be able to worship our Lord. One thing that has not been mentioned, and I'm gonna do that right now just so I don't forget it. Uh, many have asked about contribution. There's a basket as you go out this door here on the the table there, it says uh, contributions. There's a basket as you go out the back door over here uh, on the table that says contributions. Rather than pass a, a tray around that we would all have to handle, uh, those baskets are set there and you can leave your contribution in the basket as you go out, out the door. Some things we need to remember, uh, Janice Turner had a uh, heart procedure up in Oklahoma City this week. I believe she's back home now, and uh, just need to keep her in our, our prayers. Uh, Demetra Wright is now home. Says Betty Jo has finished her chemo treatments, but was back in TMC because she was very, very weak. And is she still in TMC? Rebus. Rebus. Oh, she's at Rebus now, okay. Uh, so she's, Corliss and Juanita have both been not doing well. Uh, Juanita was in the hospital for a period of time. Uh, they are back in Brookdale, uh, but they are not doing well and we need to continue to remember them in our prayers. Also, we need to remember Charlie and Dee Davis. Dee's brother, Russell Hargrove, passed away this week. And to remember Donnie Simmons and all of his family, his dad, Coy Simmons, also passed away uh, this past week. Our graduating seniors, uh, there was a list in the, uh, in the bulletin. You're encouraged to take a look at that list and if there's someone that's gradu a graduating senior uh, that's not on that least list, please let the office know as soon as you can so that we have a list of those who are graduating, yes. Ron Taylor's sister just passed away, and, uh, we are, and Demetra is also here this morning. I, uh, okay, I, I did see that Demetra was here. Uh, Ron Taylor's uh, sisters had passed away, and I was not aware of that. Uh, we need to, to remember them in our prayers. If you would uh, stand, and, and we'll close with a word of prayer. O oh Lord our God, as we come before you this morning grateful for the blessings that we have in this life, Father, grateful that you've carried us through this time of struggles. We look forward, Father, to being able to be united as one again, to be able to all be together, to share the time and the fellowship together that, that we so much desire. And to Father, the things that keep us strong in our life and strong in our faith, strong in our commitment to live our lives always for you. Father, for those many of our number who are suffering from the frailties of this life, we ask a special blessing for each one of those, for the families who care for them, 
And Father, for the Simmons family and for Charlie and Dee at this time and for Ron and Charlotte, as they mourn the loss of ones that they love dearly, we just ask a special blessing for them. And Father, may we always be a source of encouragement and strength to them. Father, as we continue to go through this period of time in our society when we, we struggle to avoid the illness that's so prevalent around us, we ask you to grant us guidance, grant us wisdom and understanding of the things that we, may, that we need to do. But Father, never let us lose sight of the hope that we have in our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen.